Welcome to the Tuesday Nighters. Welcome to the Weekly Book Club. Welcome to the Church of Jesus Christ. Uh, this is week 65, I think, if, I'm, if I've got this right. And our, our theme for the next couple weeks will be your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. Homework assignment number one, where is that found in the scripture? Your young men shall see visions, your old men shall see, dream dreams. And we can talk about that if anyone gets it while we're going through this. We can talk about that when we get to the discussion. So here's what you've done over the last 64 weeks, uh, which is 248 chapters, more than 6,000 verses, more than 164,000 words, uh, and 107 hours of discussion, which is absolute amazement to me. And I'm hoping and praying that it has enhanced each one of you in some spiritual way. So let's get to 1 Nephi, the eighth chapter. This is actually the first of a couple chapters we're going to do over the next couple weeks. It's going to begin with uh, <laughs> Lehi's dream, and he identifies it as two different things, and we'll touch on that just for a moment. Um, and then Lehi is going to pray for something similar. And so I don't want you to feel compelled, though you certainly can go any direction you want to go tonight. I don't think we have to feel compelled to answer all the questions of what does this mean or what does that mean? Because Lehi's dream is a dream of clarification. So keep that in mind. But again, if that's where our conversation goes, more power to us. That'll be fun, too. Uh, I just don't want anyone to their heads to explode trying to figure stuff out um, because God provides that. Um, so starting off, very few um, moments in any one of our lives um, stands alone without some influence for, for things before it, but things that will happen after it. So we understand that um, everything is tied together. Be that as it may, 600 years before Jesus Christ was born, a man named Lehi, who was an Israelite, born into the house of Joseph, left Jerusalem. Now, anyone who read the first seven chapters of First Nephi knows the uh, what this took, and it was a great, great um, seven chapters to read. Excitement! Uh, I can't imagine what those seven chapters um, felt like to live through them. Um, but there was all kinds of stress, all kinds of drama, all kinds of decisions being made. Uh, exposing different personalities. So we know this, it was no small venture for Lehi and his wife, Sariah, and their four sons, Laman, Lemuel, Nephi, and Sam, along with their wives and their children, as they, as they took off at first into the wilderness. I want to, I want to clarify that. The, the first direction that he was given through a dream he being Lehi, through a dream, and it's it's noted in the second chapter, the second verse, that he was given a dream to depart into the wilderness. And if you read about that, you'll find that that they stayed, the wilderness they stayed on kind of um, followed the Red Sea southward. So most believe that they traveled southeast from Jerusalem which probably means they launched, well, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Um, but anyway, he had this dream about leaving. And, and so the first seven chapters are all about leaving Jerusalem and what that took. Then as they were on their way, he told of this much grander dream. And that is First Nephi, the eighth chapter. Um, so before they, they left Jerusalem, he had a dream to leave. Before they left the continent, he had another dream of what to expect. And I want to try to capture it just by clips of verses. That's all I'm going to use to explain um, kind of the, the evolutionary trek that they took through this, this dream. So he starts out by saying, I have dreamed a dream, and he names it two different ways. Or in other words, says Lehi, I have seen a vision. And I've never heard it that way myself. I, I've often said I've never in my life seen a vision, but because I've had a dream, in Lehi's words, maybe we all have, um, but I don't see myself as visionary at all. So I have dreamed a dream, or in other words, I have seen a vision. His dream had, had brought comfort, if you will, concerning Nephi and Sam, and, con and uh, some concerning discomfort um, as it related to Laman and Lemuel. The powerful visuals in this dream, um, as we read through it, I hope stay with you. For me, um, long after I read this for the first time, it's 
the the visuals stayed with me. I saw, as an example, I saw the rod of iron. I saw the river. I saw, and I, I'm assuming you did too. And so he provides really these clear visuals for this dream. And so here's kind of how it goes through. I didn't name verses. It's unimportant because you probably will in some of your comments. But here's how it went. The things that he saw included a man in a white robe, a dark and dreary wilderness, a large and spacious field, a tree whose fruit was desirable to make one happy. The fruit was white to exceed all the whiteness ever seen before. A river of water, that river was near the tree. And near, in the same way, he saw the head of that water where there was a fountain that he names later, thereof a little way off. He saw a rod of iron that extended along the bank of the river. The rod of iron led to the tree. And that's when he says later, and it led to this fountain. But anyway, a straight and narrow path along by the rod of iron. It also led to the tree numberless is the word he used numberless concourses of people an exceeding great mist of darkness they as a reference to the concourses of people they did lose their way they wandered off and were lost some of the effects of that mist they caught hold of the end of the rod of iron through the mist of darkness clinging to the rod of iron obviously there were a couple sets of different people and and different reactions they did press forward through the mist they did come forth and partake of the fruit of the tree a great and spacious building he saw they were in the attitude of mocking and pointing their fingers the people were ashamed they whose fingers or who were receiving those pointing fingers at them the people were ashamed. They fell away into forbidden paths. Many were drowned in the depths of the fountain. Many were lost from his view, wandering in strange roads. Great was the multitude that did enter into the strange building. They that did enter did point their fingers of scorn. So that's the dream in clips. So we, here's what we know. Lehi must have been a great, faithful man who completely trusted in God, so much so that he left everything behind. And we, we take from what we read, he was a man of wealth and obviously comfort. But he made this decision knowing it was a forever decision. Now, from the beginning, we found his family was conflicted, torn by his dedication his two youngest sons were in following him completely. Nephi and Sam, his two oldest sons, Laman and Lemuel, were out from the beginning. Yet, in spite of this, and we know this is troubling from a parental viewpoint, yet Lehi was resolute in fulfilling all that God had for him. And he even recruited these who were torn. And, and if you read those first seven chapters, you find that it wasn't just the sons, but the wives of those sons. And that's what happens in any family. I am now, uh, I am now with Candace, which, which took me away from my parents, took her away from her parents. And we had decisions we made in our house. So did Laman. So did Lemuel. So did Nephi. And so did even Sam um, at, at that point of his young life. So Lehi trekked by foot is what we read um, for miles and miles and miles. It seems across Saudi Arabia, and that's where the verse says near the Red Sea. So it, it may be where they, they shipped off from, shoved off from, however you want to see that. It was into the Arabian Sea is what, what we can, I guess, surmise from that. I don't believe that they went out into the Red Sea. That, that sent, seems counterintuitive to the direction they were headed. Uh, so most believe that they, they went out into the Arabian Sea and across the ocean. So what did Lehi experience? Here's just something to think about as we go into our conversation. What do you think Lehi experienced emotionally as he stepped away from the old country, got on to those barges, never to return? 
then we read about the experiences they come over the again i'm out of chapter eight i realize that but then we read of their experiences they come over the the sea and and finally miraculously land in the americas what do you think lehi experienced emotionally as he placed his foot on the new country again never to leave so god had given him this dream that we read about or vision as he also called it that that lehi might persevere through all the challenges everything that that took place from the time he had that dream to the time they landed and even once they got to the americas we know that the difficulties continued he gave him that dream so that the the josephites would ultimately remain in the americas until until there would be another family gathering when that will be we don't know. I mean, we definitely don't know that. But we know this from the word of God. This is a land that was chosen for this purpose. So while we are certain of this, that that this land was chosen 2,600 years ago, 2,000 years back from here, 600 years back from there. So we know at least 2,600 years, but certainly it must have been much, much earlier than that. So this land was was purposed so that so that he Lehi would take his family from the old country to the new country with one single purpose, the gathering of Israel. 